are the most well thought out, well designed, well built park at Walt Disney World. Interesting. Yeah. He, he, With the most fun shows and rides. Okay. I think yeah. he likes authenticity because Ross actually contracted AIDS in uh, Africa while he was there. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. I'm sorry. No, but there was, uh, I love, I do. Uh, <laughs> I do enjoy uh, I do enjoy Animal Kingdom as well. Because you know, a lot of Africans have AIDS. No, yeah, I, no, I I got it. No, no, I was able to read between the lines on that. Um, well, I, look, this is why this is why I'm starting a nonprofit to send butt machines to Africa. Uh, Bono is in on it with me. We're You're listening to the Fuck Yeah Nation Network. Theme park memories. So I went down at Carowinds, which is a theme park just outside of Charlotte. I was on vacation with my husband, Sam, and we were waiting in line for this ride called the Intimidator, which is themed after Dale Earnhardt. And I was waiting there, and there was two people behind me just chatting it up, so I started eavesdropping. and they were talking about the ride we were just about to go on. And they were saying something about how they thought it was interesting that they rebranded the ride. So I turned to them, and they said, hey, why do you think they did that? And they said, oh, well, before it was called something different, and someone got decapitated on it. So they thought it'd be in everyone's best interest to re to rename the ride. And I was like, oh, did, well, did they change it? And they're like, no, they just changed the name and the color. Oh, so the entire ride's still the same? Well, now, now, now guess who is intimidated? <laughs> it was still a fun ride, though. Theme Park Memories. Man, excited for this episode of Robert Land with our guest, Keith Carey, from This Is Not A Show. He's hilarious, loves theme parks. It's a good one, guys. What do you got to say about Keith Carey? Rich. Well, fuck that motherfucker up. <laughs> I, I don't... I don't Love you, Keith. <laughs> there we go. And I'm excited, guys. This is a clip from episode seven with Kevin Tinkin. Enjoy. Getting awfully close, and I like it. Oh, it's okay. Stay still, Robert. This will take a second. We, we went to the zoo. Yeah. And the zoo, okay, that is definitely restored. The like, zoo is amazing. Dude, it's one of the best zoos out there. Yeah. I, yeah, I, re- I recommend it to everybody that digs zoos. Not the people that fuck horses or, you know, not right. that zoo. But Mr. Like, Hands shows yeah, up. Happy Hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, oh, God. I saw that too at, at, as a teenager. I never um, saw it, but I knew all the references because I had I had some gross friends. I was friends with everybody, so like the real degenerates or whatever, yeah, I would yeah. learn from them. And then I'd go back to my church friends and be like, "You ever hear about Mister Hands?" <laughs> and like, is that in the Bible? Like, no, no, it's not. Is that in Job uh, Horse Long three sixteen? No, I, dude, I, I went. Yeah, there I, is some. There is some horse. Is there some horse? talk oh, in the Bible? Oh. Yeah, uh, Ezekiel. 2320 I believe it is which is uh, she lusted after her paramours whose members were like that of donkeys and whose issue was like that of horses oh my god the translation is she's like donkey dicks and guys that <laughs> came a lot I guess and they were talking about the Nephilim which is like the giants you know in the yeah. Old Testament it's this woman who just loves giants and um yeah, giant dogs. The Bible's like, you need to know this. <laughs> you need to know. Hi, it's me, Ezekiel. I'm here to teach you about this woman who loves Donkey Dong. <laughs> Across it, and then the next fucking web search they're gonna do is gonna be Butt Machine Boys. Like it's gonna. That's yeah, we referenced. Uh, Butt Machine Boys. Oh, are we it's a recording? Beautiful site. Oh, what is thanks, Butt man. Machine? Boys? It's a it's a uh, a site where men get <laughs> fucked by the, the butt machines. But these look kind of like the butt machines. Uh, right. So but, okay, but you're just saying butt machine like that's common knowledge. That's the part that <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I'm not bumping against what a boy is yeah, yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is a butt machine like a like a dick on a stick kind of situation? Like I, I, it's it varies. There's like some that look like guns, but they, but I it's mean, a machine that fucks you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, but cool. That's all I need to know. My, yeah, a friend of mine in junior high who is the biggest homophobe, <laughs> uh, big old air quotes. Yeah, yeah, loved loved watching Butt Machine Boys because he thought it was funny, but it looked like two dudes look like Stone Cold Steve Austin <laughs> just getting reamed by this machine. And no, it's a great bit. It was very funny. I mean, it was like it was kind of funny to see. Uh, all right, cool. So I always get weird out. So I'm looking looking at this fella right yeah, here. Gonna, yeah. Okay. Well, you can look at me if you want. Like cool. <laughs> hey, what's up, dude? Robert Land. Hey. Yeah, okay. Fine. All right. Hi, welcome to Robert Land. 
and I'm going to start this over. Let's do this. Okay. Right. Don't you dare. You keep right. that one. Uh, uh, That's shit. how this starts. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay fuck it. Whatever. We're, we're here. Whatever. I, Welcome the, to... All right. The fucking overwhelming Wayne's World energy of everything happening right now. <laughs> Evan's mom walking in his garage door closes. Meet me spilling this fucking diabetic soda. No, that was me spilling the diabetic soda. Okay, well... Yeah. I, it, was, it was definitely... It is. Yeah. It is. All right. Well, all right. One, two, three. Welcome to Robert Land. That's right. Your favorite not safe for work comedy theme park podcast. And I'm your host, Robert Thompson, comedian, musician, theme park phenologist, all I do. What is up, everybody? How you guys doing? Boy, this is a very, very special episode. Wow. In 1971, Walter Elias Disney had died, but he had left a very magical place in Florida that would one time was called the Florida Project. Uh, uh, he had left it for us to enjoy, and it's called Walt Disney World. Uh, yeah, there is 25 hotels. It takes up what two million miles of yeah, land. Dude. Oh yeah, uh, approximately. Yeah, there, it's a it's a big motherfucker. They got a they got a firehouse. Crocodiles. Yeah, crocodiles. They've got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a crocodile. Or there's, not, uh, there's a crocodile somewhere there, uh, maybe. Yeah, it's it, there's a crocodile. There definitely is. We'll get into that. I have a very fun story about a very scary man who told me about uh, dying by pro- crocodiles. So we're gonna get into uh, it. He lived to tell the tale. Oh, I'm excited. You, okay. Yeah. Oh, what were we gonna say? Oh, I thought you were talking about a guy that was on that drug called crocodile. Is that a drug? Oh, the yeah. weird Russian like super heroin. Yeah. Oh. It eats away your skin. Yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, it's it, it's like some weird fucking uh, Resident Evil shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm I'm sure that's in Florida for sure. Absolutely. There's definitely oh, someone. Yeah. 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 So. Anyways, we're going to get into our, this is our Walt Disney World special, guys. I'm excited. The four theme parks, two water parks. Uh, Butt Machine Boys. Butt Machine Boys. Hell yeah. Yeah, <laughs> taking place there. Uh, that's it. You know that big uh, dome in fucking Epcot? That's what's in there. Yeah. Spaceship Earth, <laughs> gone. It's Ape Ship Girth. <laughs> <laughs> Man, well, I'm excited. We're joined by, of course, our co-host, Mr. Roscoe Soul Train. Yeah. yeah speaking, uh, speaking of my name, oh, by the way, I want to change it to uh, uh, Magic Jordan, actually, just for algorithm purposes. <laughs> you know, just because you know someone's gonna stumble. They're looking for Magic Johnson or Michael Jordan. But you gotta put like a do- uh, like a, a cent sign in there, just so that you have an even more of like an internet searchability, like. Pop up? Yeah, I'm not, who knows, man? I you know somebody yeah. was is going to be looking for that because they want to change their rap name to Magic what, Magic Jordan. Magic Jordan. Okay, but yeah, what rapper yeah. is putting the scent symbol in their name? It'll just that's a that's very that's humble rapper. Usually they go well, dollar yeah. sign. He's like, let's <laughs> let's not get carried you know away. It's like, he's like Scrooge McDuck. You know what I'm saying? He just wants to stack them coins. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I mean, you know, I might get a free chalupa somewhere. Like, hey, it's Magic Jordan. You don't know Magic Jordan, dude? Yeah. Like, so or maybe a free AIDS test. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> speaking speaking of AIDS. It's great to have Ross in here. Wow. <laughs> Shocked that wasn't my intro. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, we're we are excited. We got uh, Mr. Keith Carey, no relation to uh, Danny Carey. to Keith Olbermann or Mariah Carey. Yeah, uh, which I'm. Has people ever asked if you related to Mariah Carey at some point? In I got life? Mariah Carey. I got a lot of. This is how I knew I was getting fatter when I was a kid, is I got a lot of Jim Carrey, and then at a certain point in high school, it became Drew Carey. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh no, something's gone wrong with my tits. <laughs> but then Drew Carey got thin. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> it didn't help me. Damn it. <laughs> well, I'm excited, guys. We're talking about weight loss and AIDS. This is going to be a great theme park podcast. Uh, <laughs> Bum Machine Boys, too. That's, yes. Uh, that's a reoccurring theme throughout all the podcasts from... From here on out, really. Yeah. We if can't. there's a sales pitch to being a butt machine boy, it's that you will not get AIDS from the butt machine. You will not. <laughs> it, it seems very unlikely as long as you bleach it down. You right. COVID yeah. safe that butt machine. Yeah. 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 The boys are safe. <laughs> yeah. But uh, <laughs> we're running through a car wash. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> But we're glad you piss ant bitches are here. Oh, sorry, this is our simp audience. We have a simp audience. Our producer tells us that we need to address them appropriately. So, okay. you little garbage underneath my yeah. balls, you know? Shit under my shoe. Yeah, why you dirty little content pigs open wide and swallow this pot? <laughs> but before we do, we're going to go to my... Daddy's going to feed you factoids about Disney World. <laughs> yes, that's right. Before we do, my favorite segment, your favorite segment, a theme park minute with Zach Hillman. Enjoy. This is Theme Park Minute with Zach Hillman. Knott's Berry Farm in Buena Park, California opened the Timber Mountain Log Ride in 1969, the first ever log ride. Knott's pulled out all the stops, getting none other than John Wayne to christen the ride. A Playboy interview recently resurfaced where John Wayne stated how much he loved the ride and hated black people. 
Bet you didn't know that, did you? Well, here I am, with me, Keith Carey, and Roscoe, Soul Train! Soul Train! <laughs> wow, that was, I, never, I, I had no idea. Oh boy, that was, Jack. what a great segment I definitely heard. Oh, yes, man. man, good times. <laughs> the uh, Hillman is a fucking, uh, it's just a, an encyclopedia or addiction no encyclopedia of theme park knowledge that's right dude and I, I'm he's a dictionary and an encyclopedia he he's a dick cyclopedia for real <laughs> well, the dick cyclopedia the Greek name for the butt machine <laughs> man uh, so Keith it's it's a pleasure to have you man you you just went to Walt Disney World COVID era. Dude, I forgot this was a theme park podcast yeah, yeah, for a yeah, second. We, I, was like, I was ready to talk about Disneyland. I'm like, oh, we're riffing about anal? All right, let me activate <laughs> most of my career. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have very smooth transitions uh, here. Uh, I think I brought up the Unabomber one time in, in, in uh, describing a ride. I was like, oh, I was trying to get, get us back to theme parks. I'm like, what well, you know what a toad, if not the Unabomber of the <laughs> yeah. fantasy land. <laughs> well, you know what else is the bomb? Have you had those nachos at Knott's Berry Farm? Uh, yeah, no. Um, but uh, so Chernobyl, let's talk. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So when'd you get back? Uh, a couple weeks ago. Sweet. How long did you stay for? Uh, we, me and my girlfriend went out for our anniversary. And it was kind of this. Uh, I had to be diplomatic about it because she is not a theme park person, and definitely oh. not a theme park counts as an anniversary vacation person. Oh, wow. so I was like, it's gonna be half Disney World, half just Florida trip for us. Oh, okay. So we did three days at the park. So you did experience the crocodile in Florida. Well, oh yeah, that's yeah, that's absolutely. how we celebrated our three. Year, you yeah. know, the first anniversary is paper, then it's wood, then it's synthetic Russian opioids. Yes, yes. <laughs> that's uh, that's love, you know. Yeah, yeah dude. Man, so <laughs> so as far as the theme parks, was that like did that start your trip? Did you start with Disney World? We did. We did. Uh, we did Epcot first because oh. I knew Epcot would be the most her speed because she's not like a roller coaster person, not like a big ride person. So I was like, this, we can just go get drunk in a lot of yeah. tiny countries and then go on a bunch of rides about how the future is going to be dope. Yeah. Right. That's oh, really yeah. the vibe of Epcot yeah. is that uh, China's neat and one day it'll be the year 3000. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I love it because it, to me, like my favorite thing about Epcot is that like it, you know, it was open in the early eighties. So it's got some of that vibe of like, this is more of old Disneyland. Like the, the, uh, you know, especially the old Epcot stuff. Right. Like the fucking, uh, what is it? The sphere, the, what's the uh, spaceship, spaceship Earth. Earth yeah. Yeah, yeah. I almost, I always almost call it the fucking, what's the, Scientology piece of shit movie. Oh, the the, the uh, Dianetics. Yeah, di uh, Dina yeah. No, uh, God. Dianetics, the ride, yeah, yeah, would yeah. actually slap. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That oh, would be are dope. Are you talking about that movie? What God, is that what is it? Uh, oh, Battlefield Battle Earth. Earth. I always call it Battlefield <laughs> Earth, the ride, which should have happened for so many reasons, but I'm sure an email was sent yeah. by L. Ron Hubbard's people. Like, <laughs> yeah. could we get a Robo Travolta in there? I, I think that Forrest Whitaker was holding out on his likeness being used, so they just shelved the whole thing. Like, <laughs> fuck this. Yeah, man. I mean, he does resemble some of those animatronics that they put out to waste you know a little bit like especially Travolta in that, now yeah. Travolta yeah. now too oh yeah. yeah my mom said to me the other day she's like I had no idea John Travolta is bald it's like I think that's a good thing that you didn't know that because I mean the guy's fucking unbearable so you're, right. you're okay yeah especially for uh, the masseuses out there but oh, uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but yeah so hand jobs you enjoyed I just pictured a Travolta animatronic and it's you remember the uh, the scene in Pirates where they're chasing the ladies around oh. it's that but he's just chasing the Thai boy who came to work on his quads <laughs> <laughs> oh, whipping him with the towel. You? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. No, so, man. It's did, not gay if I'm rich. Come back. Did your yeah. girlfriend? Uh, did she enjoy Epcot? She did. She loved Epcot because we. Re I really was like, okay. So let's let's get right into it. The yeah. best thing about uh, COVID, and there have been so many good things. Yeah. Yes. Is that Disney World is still running at like reduced capacity, mm -hmm. so like nothing had a line. We didn't wait more than an hour for cool. anything. Oh. So, so it really was. We just spent the majority of the day just kind of cruising, eating, drinking, and then, you know, the, the Spaceship Earth is good. Test Track is good. There's not really a lot of rides at Epcot. Nope. It's much more of the hang spot, but it's a good first park to kind of, like, ease into the whole thing. I think so, too, man. I, I love I love getting into it with that one because it's got, like, it's it's got the, you know, iconic fucking geodesic sphere. It's got all that. But, yeah, the pacing is great for a first day. You, right. don't, you don't want to do, like, a... Yeah, like a Magic Kingdom the first day. I feel like that was cool to leave last when I went because it's like it's the, it's got the familiar quality. Right. But it's like a bizarro Disneyland, you know? That was the last one we did too, and we only went for like fifteen minutes basic really. We went to Magic Kingdom, we were also like super zonked oh, out. Okay, yeah, and yeah. we got there and I remembered my problem with Magic Kingdom is it's kinda of just Disneyland except all the rides are a little shittier. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and we went on their haunted mansion and got bummed out and then I was like, Can we just go? <laughs> 
Did yeah, it's like 1970s. It, it's weird. It's like a lot of the stuff just feels like 1970s cheapness. It's one of those things where if you didn't go to Disneyland constantly growing sure. up, which I'm, I'm from OC as well, so I went like all the time on annual passes my whole life, I could see going to the Magic Kingdom and being like, oh, that's like my version of Disneyland. Mm-hmm. But I can't turn off the comparison part of my brain. Yeah, because so like, the Magic Kingdom is definitely the least uh, exciting one to me. Yeah, yeah I agree. You'd be like, oh, I'm, I'm home. And then, oh, wait, Liberty Square? What is yeah. what is this? Yeah, yeah. I, I, Nothing. It's just dog shit all around you. You're like, fuck, <laughs> fuck. I, I mean, I enjoy I enjoy Magic Kingdom because like it's got like things that used to be at Disneyland, like People Mover. Right. You've got like uh, Country the Bear well, Country Bear Jamboree. The Country Bear Jamboree was the only reason I really wanted to go Magic Kingdom, yeah. and it was fucking closed. No, oh my god. I think that they're probably not getting vaccinated, and maybe there's oh, they're definitely yeah. anti-maskers. Yeah. <laughs> no. No. Anti-maskers, anti-maskers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it is. The Country a- Bears actually. It, what it is is Big Al was caught storming in the capital oh, uh, so okay. they're waiting for the legal shit to kind of like clear yeah, off yeah, yeah. The heat down a little and then they'll yeah. bring the show back makes sense and then the, the carousel of progress is so it's a trip I feel like there's there's a little bit of stuff that we don't have that's new but there's a lot of stuff that's old like old Disneyland like the people mover the, the country bear but then there's the electrical light parade was going before COVID right. but then you had a, a carousel of progress which was probably closed as well which is the it's the old carousel of progress from Disneyland they just yeah. shipped its ass to Florida but I love it because it's like dilapidating and it's like right. that dude from the, from Ren Stimpy where what, what's his name Wilbur Cod where his like oh, face is falling off right. yeah, yeah. yeah there's always some malfunctions terrifying well it's such day. a good metaphor for how bright we thought the world was going to be back then versus <laughs> what the world actually became. Yeah, yeah. Just a melting robot. Just, there's a great big beer for tomorrow. Jeff Bezos owns everyone. Like... <laughs> It does. It does have that quality. So you guys, you did Epcot first. That's dope. Did you do uh, the drinking around the world and stuff? We did. We didn't. We didn't necessarily have like the hardcore plan. We were like, yeah, we'll just yeah. cruise, and that's just sort of what we were drawn to. Because there is this fucking intense subculture at Epcot, and it's at the parks here too. But it's so hardcore there, of like the wine moms who are just like, we are here to get fucking loaded. Totally. Yeah. And like, like it's it's almost creepy how much it's just. It, it feels like the mom version of when furries took over My Little Pony and we're like this was for kids but now it's about our boners oh yeah this is like Midwest mom Whoa. just being like I know this is for families but we are here to get blackout drunk and harass people making nine dollars an hour oh, <laughs> oh my god, god. yeah they, they always, like when I went there was a lot of uh, like families with those you know they like the matching shirts like the Incredit drunks or whatever yeah exactly and it, it did get it kind of got sad because I remember at one point like it was the uh, what celebration of the world whatever that outdated I think it's Illuma Magic Illuma whatever oh, I remember that yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the, the fireworks show the fireworks so. show it's like this really bland fireworks show yeah. that's playing yeah and the, we, we opted out of going to Fantasmic to go to that and everyone always hyped up Phantasm it's like man the, you guys haven't been to Phantasm here the dragon comes out kisses you on the lips they rub your back <laughs> it's amazing they give you five dollars it's like this is an amazing experience apparently we're like no we want to see something we haven't seen so we went to Illuma Magic and it was just you know it was like really just drab whatever and you so know, I will say the one thing that's good about that show is that because it takes place on that giant fucking lake the viewing all around is great so you can find a place to stand and watch the show Without, like, you know, an un- 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 unobstructed view, no matter yeah, where yeah. you're at. Yeah, you don't have to, like, sort of, like, have, like, a plan for where you're going to fight your way to yeah, try and totally. get to be able to watch Whereas, the like, thing. Whereas, like, with Disneyland, it's, like, to see Fantasmic, you have to, you know, if you don't get the dinner show seats or whatever. That, have you guys ever done that before? Uh, you, like, have a dinner show, and then they put you in this private seating area, and they give you, like... I never did it for Fantasmic. I did it for World of Color in yeah. the early days of that. Both of them are cool, but I would say the Fantasmic one is better, because there was, like, this... For a while, they were doing this, like, dessert show. Okay. Where they would just like bring you out like hot chocolate coffee <laughs> and like dessert trays. Oh, that's awesome! It was it was awesome, and yeah, for sure. And there's like a little roped off area, and then people are trying to constantly try to wangle jangle their way in there. Right. But it's still it's still pretty cool. You know, yeah, I remember when I worked at the park, we had like a designated because I was uh, I worked World of Color uh, mm-hmm. crowd control, and there was like a designated area for the these people paid for the dinner that only they go there, yes. and it would basically I'd have to be the bouncer and mm-hmm. just kind of like shove tourists who didn't speak English away like no this is the special boy corner yeah. you're not allowed here <laughs> you know I, I found my buddy Scotty worked there for a while and um, Scotty has like this like this presence about him that's like super warm super sweet right. gay boy small you know okay. unassuming and also like just 
you just want to freaking grab them, you know? Right. And um, Scotty would always do this thing whenever we were at the park with him. And he'd be like, hey, it's my friend's first time here. And, you know, we didn't get seats. So we didn't, you know, get a, a, a fast pass. Is there any way? And always, like, they would just be like, no problem. Come right in. And they would put us, like, front row at the World Color. Great. You get a little little spray going. But yeah, it was always awesome. That, like, he knew how to, like, work it. There's a way There's a way to approach where you can actually get what you're trying to get yeah. and not piss people off. Totally. Like yeah. that. And yeah. Scotty, that he worked there for so long, he knew the exact you had to work the pressure points absolutely yeah. well, dude that's great that you bring that up because what i loved about disney world is it does feel kind of like a sanctuary for like people that you know aren't just not the rigid south like it's like a, a for all the like you know uh, f- like freaks sort of like you know in, in, in a nice way now I, I mean like uh i remember being there and there was a dude that came up to me and he was really friendly but he was telling me about all of the sculptures in uh it was in animal kingdom but it was like sand and it made up uh jafar or whatever and he's like hey he's all <laughs> if you just look real close that forms simba from the lion king and if you look over here it's just really very helpful and it was magical man he yeah there was something there that i just felt like everyone's kind of it's a safe place you know from the you know, usually uh, hateful, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. surrounding guys. Yeah, yeah, but a little less of that now on account of all the COVID and oh, everything. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. was this weird vibe of being there where everyone's sort of like, are we pretending we still, like, believe in this disease or are we just saying fuck it? Like, there was really kind of a... Uh, you could just feel an uneasiness in certain places where people are like, we don't know what the rules are. We don't want to get yelled at. Yes. Wow. See, so when you went, it was it's COVID time, but it's like we're, we're at a weird point where a lot of people are vaccinated. There's a lot of things like opening up, but Disney World has been open pretty much almost the entire time. I made like, a I made a point like when everything started to close, where I was like, when they started to be like, some stuff's going to reopen. Yeah. I like went to my girlfriend and my roommate, and I was like. Look, I know this is dangerous, but I need to go to Apocalypse Disney World, like yeah, yeah, just yeah. at the height of COVID, just to see what that is, because I'll never have a chance in my life. And they both rightly were like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" <laughs> but even going now, it's like weird, like where it's like you're having a good time and you kind of forget about it, and then every like eight minutes they have the the normal like Simon Sesentado's voice, but yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. "Don't fucking cough on each other," <laughs> or like come over the loudspeaker. <laughs> Yeah, that's, so did they, you know, as far as transportation during this, did, was that different at Disney World? No, they're uh, running oh, okay. monorails, they're running boats, they're running buses, it's all uh, it's all happening. Yeah, well, do they have those death traps, the uh, uh, the sky buckets going? Or? Dude, I tried to get on the sky, <laughs> we tried so hard to get on the sky bucket, and, yeah. uh, and both times we got in line for it, it stopped. Oh, wow. And we were like, it might start up again, but I'm not rolling the dice, because it broke down, what, like the first week it was yeah. open? Yeah, I was there that week. And it it was literally within hours after we'd gone it that it happened. Right. And so I remember being like, oh, fuck, that's, you know, I'm because so, I get claustrophobic and being stuck up there. Like, I feel like it would have been totally like, you know, cast away at some point. Like, I'm just, you know, having to shit outside. Or, <laughs> you like, ate the guy you were with <laughs> yeah, like 20 yeah. minutes in. <laughs> well, it was funny because like, uh, you know, I remember the next day at Animal Kingdom, there's some guy like going up to, I think I was getting like a fast pass or something. And I overheard a dude talking about it. He's like. We were up there for four hours. <laughs> and it got like really like dark for a minute. He's like, like he was in fucking Nam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was just I don't know, man. It was amazing, but yeah, I mean, maybe I missed out on some free churros or something. But I, I'm glad that didn't happen. I didn't get stuck up there. I just feel like you're kind of helpless, you know. But uh, yeah, that seems like a drag. Yeah, yeah, did yeah. Did you guys yeah. go to all four parks? We did. We uh, yeah, we did like full day at Epcot. Uh, second day, we did most of the day at MGM Studios and then went back to Epcot at night because Epcot's open later than everything else. Yeah. And then third day, we did a uh, little bit of Animal Kingdom in the morning and then went to Magic Kingdom for a little bit. Now, what would you say, what was your your girlfriend's favorite park? Yeah, because she went ape shit for Epcot. Epcot, huh. Yeah, because she really, well, it was also like it's some, it's not food and wine, but it's like the Garden Festival or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they have like double up on like weird food from everywhere and booze from everywhere. And she just, uh, she likes she's like uh she's really like art and like very she likes shit that like a grandma would like like oh it's a little miniature train in the germany town you know what i mean <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah versus mgm she's like i'll go hang out at the starbucks while you wait in line for like all the good rides <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it seemed like that one and MGM were kind of the tie for her. Those are my favorites of the two of the four. As Dude, well. I, Epcot is has grown. That's like one of my favorites for sure because it's like it's 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 unique enough. Because like MGM feels like a weird older brother to uh, California Adventure. It feels a like bit. what they were going for. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It, 
Yeah, that, that's exactly it. Nothing, and no other Disney park has ever or will ever exist that's quite like Epcot. Yeah. Because I just don't think... They want the most frenetic, here's 4,000 IPs shoved in. Yeah, and they're yeah, kind yeah. of oh, doing yeah. it to Epcot now. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's, they're building, the, it's, it's all like uh, fucking, what do you call it, construction Guardian. walled oh, off yeah, right yeah. now. They're building that Guardians of the Galaxy yeah. roller coaster. Which apparently it's supposed to be huge. Yeah, no, I think it's going to take up like the whole middle of the park. It's crazy how much. They have so much room over there. Right, it is. It is really, and it's like just the most like sort of like empty space, and just kind of like, oh, this is like a weird place to also be a Disney park. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. I found, you know, I went, I went in 2015, and I would say that unlike you guys, I would say Epcot and MGM were my least favorite. Really? Absolutely. Like, I I mean, like the most. I, I think I was the most disappointed with Epcot. Because okay. growing up, I'm, I was born in 82, so Epcot, you know, when, whenever I'd see Disney advertising on the Disney Channel growing up, everything was about Epcot. Right. So Epcot, Epcot. And I remember going thinking like, fuck yeah, this is going to be awesome. Went there and it didn't obviously live up to this hype that I had built up since I was fucking three years old. That makes sense. Yeah. So I, and I felt like it was this weird when So when I went to Walt Disney World, they were, there was a lot of stuff that was closed, especially in MGM. Most of MGM was all closed down. You said this was 2015? 2015. Okay. So they just so, took out like that, uh, their tram, probably, right? Like their studio tour? Did they oh, it was gone. Okay, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that had just ended. That was like right when they were kind of like doing the sort of big retool and overhaul where yes. it was like all the movie shit was coming out yeah. and all the Star Wars shit yep. was going in. So, yeah, yeah they hadn't start, they hadn't broke ground on Star, Star Wars Land yet. There was no, uh, the, Toy Story Land wasn't there yet either. Was Great Movie Ride gone already? Great Movie Ride was there. And okay. I was super stoked to ride the Great Movie Ride. That was probably the highlight. I would say two things about Hollywood Studios that I loved were the, the restaurants. The restaurants at Hollywood Studios were fantastic. Oh, okay. yeah. They had the 50s Primetime Diner. They had the sci-fi diner. I love that sci-fi. Dude, I tried to so go there, but you couldn't get into any restaurants oh, really with yeah, COVID dude. shit. Yeah, that's, that's one thing I did want to talk about is the food situation right now during, like, COVID. And no one had really told me, like, you, you have an idea of mobile order, but you don't realize, oh, that could take an hour and totally fuck up what we're doing. Right. Yeah, Bengal Barbecue was I, – I just went to Disneyland recently, and I didn't know. I didn't go in knowing. And, like, Disneyland, if there isn't a lot of spots, like, I mean – if you can get a dinner reservation, which I heard you have to get like months in advance, like when you get tickets to these places. Yeah, I, had to, I tried to get a reservation every day we went to the park. I could only get one dinner reservation, oh, like the whole three days. Where, where'd you go? Yeah, we went to uh, I forget the name of it, but it's the uh, it's the place in Japan in Epcot. The like uh, like Benihana. Yeah, Benny. Yeah, 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 I think yeah. it's called Hibachi or whatever. Like oh, the, where okay. they grill at the yeah, table. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that was cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, although it was funny because we had to share a table with like this. Uh, it was me and my girl who were like. We're, we're just going full, like, tourist drunk and just trying to be the fun people at the table and we're yeah. riffing with the guy. And then the other side is just this single dad with three teenage girls who clearly is having the gnarliest week of his life and just cl- doesn't want anybody's whimsy, doesn't want, just wants a beer and a normal white people steak. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I felt bad for him because the whole time he's just like, shut up, fuck you, leave me alone. <laughs> were they doing like, here's a train in the station? Or oh, like, yeah, 100%. Okay, he's yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. great, it's a volcano, eat shit. <laughs> 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 yeah, I I, uh, I went to uh, the Italian spot, and this is obviously pre-COVID, so it was like easier to get reservations. Right. And I, I love that place. It was like, uh, you know, everyone there, what's good about Epcot is everyone is from those spots. So it's like right. you're really talking to a dude from Italy, you know, and I, I enjoyed uh, just that part, that aspect of it. it was funny. But I remember I talked to this girl that was in Germany selling pretzels or whatever. I was like, man, so you're in, you're in the States, you know, and she's like, yeah, you know, I, I would really like to be in Hollywood or New York, but I'm I'm in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh God, this poor woman. You know, like you, you forget that they're in a fucking swamp. Yeah. You know, I mean, right. this yes. is not the America they wanted to come. <laughs> yeah. And it's yeah. not, and it's not like they're from like some like third world war torn country. It's like, oh, I come from Germany, which yeah. is more advanced than everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> east of Houston. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, yeah. <laughs> Uh, my favorite place to go is uh, Waffle House. I've uh... the house of how you say it, waffles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, it, I did. I do like that sort of authenticity of them having like the employees from other places. But I, I, I remember this when I was a kid because I lived in Florida for a little bit when I was a kid. So I've been oh, then snap. as well. 
And I remember like seeing people like get so excited about the employees that it felt weirdly racist. Like they were just like, look, a Japanese lady. The way you would be like, look, Pluto. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh my God. <laughs> Where wow. I got, and, and it really, the less white the country was, the more excited. Like, get a picture of me with this black guy from somewhere else. Like, <laughs> yeah, that, no intentional malice to it, but looking back at it, I'm like, this feels, must feel odd if you're those people. Yeah, and it's got to be weird because, like, that's if we went to, like, you know, German land and Germany and, like, they have, like, an American cheeseburger veil and you've got, yeah. you know, Donald Trump the ride or whatever, like, you know, <laughs> the fucking whatever this, where he goes to the moon and, yeah. you know, puts an American flag and, yeah, I don't know. And do not reach down. The lap bar will grab your pussy automatically. <laughs> Dude, I, yeah, the, the, the funny thing is, like, they're, like, representing their country, but they're like, here's Anna and Elsa. You know, it's like these yeah. cartoons. It's a, I love the Frozen ride. Right. That ride is so I didn't dope. go on the Frozen ride. I've watched the walkthrough. That line was super long and it broke oh, down shit. when we got oh, in damn. it. Yeah. But uh, I I loved that weird Norway boat ride. Oh, the Maelstrom. Dude. Well, because it's such a fucking weird thing to yeah. exist because it's just like trolls and then you end in like some weird oil torn ocean. And it's, yeah. uh, it, again, it's the thing about Epcot that I love is like all this goofy, just odd as shit they'll never build again. I and know. You replace dude. that with intellectual property. I get it. Kids want to go see Frozen, but I feel like you lose a little of the charm of what made that park uh, unique. Oh, yeah. All those odd, like, kind of, you know, educational rides, like like the Body Pavilion. Oh, Body Wars. Body, wo- body the Works. Food Wars, too. Yeah, there was, there was the... Uh, there yeah. used to be the Food Rock yeah, 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 show, yeah, yeah. which I remember yeah. being one of the worst things I've ever <laughs> oh, seen in my life. With the, like, the puppets? Or it the it was like, they were, I think they were animatronic or maybe puppets, so. yeah. but it was like, yeah, they were all, like... Very limited animatronic. They were was, all food yeah. puns on famous <laughs> pop stars. Like, it was no, like PETA games. Gabriel is the one I always remember. <laughs> Wasn't there, and then they changed it into like an animal kingdom, like save the save the rainforest thing for for less when I was there. I think now that might be the building where they just have the here's what we're building at Disney World yeah, pavilion. Yeah, yeah. Like they have like a like a blue sky cellar kind of thing. Out yeah, there. I didn't yeah, go yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah where they, it was in the same building as where they had soaring. Oh so yeah, 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 that's and it. They had like. It, it was weird because I went into that pavilion and I, was, I looked around and I was like, this, this feels like there's just like rides at the food court. <laughs> yeah, that is a does. small food court. <laughs> it's did. such a piece of design that does not hold up to modern aesthetics in any way. It's like, it's unpleasant in a way I find interesting. Yeah. Like, yeah. I love the plant ride. That like the, the where you go in, oh, and it's yeah. like oh that super that, slow boat yeah, where it's like yeah, look yeah. at all the shit we're growing. That's, yeah, that's, that's that amazing. Yeah, that, that actually ride is kind of fun. Yeah, it's definitely a ride that wouldn't happen now because no. it's just like oh 100 percent plants. No. Yeah, but I, the, uh, the plants eat the shit from the fish and then we filter <laughs> it back through and we grow it all together. Yeah, yeah, yeah like that yeah. that is the and shit maybe eating. you would ignore in the pre-show on the way to a real ride where right. totally. fucking Nemo teaches you about friendship or whatever. Don't be alarmed, boys and girls. This ride will be resumed very shortly. For now, here's our intermission with some more theme park memories. And then back to the program with our guest, Keith Carey. Theme park memories. Yeah, one time I was on the Avatar ride at uh, Disney World, and uh, I thought I would up the ante by doing some cocaine while riding that dragon, you know, like chasing the dragon, riding the dragon on Avatar. It was pretty cool. I popped a blood vessel in my eye that day. I don't know if it had anything to do with all the drugs, but uh, it was fun. I had a churro. Fuck yeah. Theme park memories. Hi, this is Jerry from Jerry's blog, and I just want to talk about something that um, recently, uh, I, I've endured a lot of trauma. And, um, you know, the, the last couple of years have been very difficult uh, for me specifically, not everyone else. Um, this isn't about other people the rest of the world. This is about me. And I've been through a lot. Um, and I found it very problematic when I went to Disneyland uh, in Florida, which is called Disney World, which I find offensive. Uh, so I went, um, and I, I like to be careful. You know, they say to wear two masks, and I've been wearing actually three masks and a snorkel mask on top of it. And uh, I wear fins, I wear slippers because I felt like that actually completes the outfit. The look is proper, and maybe less people would make fun of me if they saw me dressed as a scuba diver rather than just being silly and wearing a scuba mask. Well, here's where the trauma really begins. Um, it's Pride Month, and I thought that you could celebrate oneself at Disneyland, Florida. And uh, while I was there, uh, I was delighted to see Keith in line, in line to go on Splash Mountain. But then I remembered that Splash Mountain is an inherently racist ride. And when I walked up, initially to get an autograph from Keith. 
but then to scold him and remind him how problematic his systemic racism is. Well, what happened next is he didn't listen to anything I had to say, and then he pointed at me and called me a stupid scuba bitch. And I'm still in therapy right now. I had thoughts of killing myself many, many times before this event. But now, I'm still thinking of killing myself. So I hope you can pass this message along to Keith Carey and just let him know, thank you. Thank you for adding to the reasons that I think about killing myself daily. Thank you, Keith Carey. Theme Park Memories. Oh, hello. This is Hank Azaria wishing Robert Land a very happy 79th episode. Congratulations, Robert Land. Theme Park Memories. No, I, you know, so did you spot crocodiles or alligators when you're out there? <laughs> so we didn't, <laughs> but uh, there, there, we, we did a lot of walking, like between spots, because waiting for the bus is a pain in the ass. Plus, we both smoke, and you can't smoke in the parks. Oh, that's right. So we're right. like, all right, if we're going spot to spot, we'll just cruise, burn a couple cigarettes on the way uh, in between. And there's, like, it, you when you walk between some of the parks, you go, like, under the freeway, and there's no guardrail between you and the water. There's just, like, a dozen signs, like, hey, there really are fucking alligators here. <laughs> yeah. And you could see them a little kind of, like, under the water there. Yeah. Uh, and it's really weird to me. Yeah. Like, alligators freak me the fuck out. Oh, totally. Dude, because we, we, uh, <laughs> we had a fun experience uh, where we were leaving the property to go to a Walmart. Okay. We took an Uber, and it was... Uh, the, the Uber there, the guy, I don't remember anything, but we went to this Walmart, which also kind of felt dangerous. It really felt like, it felt like they were like preparing for COVID, but it was like, you know, it was what, November 2019? Like it had like this very like hostile sort of like, I don't know, it just was very Florida, you know? Um, but we, we left this Walmart and we're heading back to Disney World property. And the fellow that we have is this bald gentleman. It looks like he'd be a bouncer or like, you know, maybe a, 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 a bum machine boy, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, he he looks like yeah he'd be in a Jason Statham movie, you know. Gotcha. And so he's 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 our driver. Doesn't say a word for like fifteen minutes, right. and all of a sudden <laughs> he, he, he he chimes in, and it's just completely foreboding. It like Quentin Tarantino wrote his dialogue at this point. He's like, okay. yeah, right away. He's like. Alligators, ten o'clock, and we're like, "What? <laughs> okay, all right." And he's like, "Yeah," and he's uh, he's like, uh, "Yes, I've seen alligators grip a baby child and he ripped him apart." He's, he's the fucking guy from Jaws. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he he talks about the he, he's like, "You guys hear about the baby killing the other a couple of years ago?" And we're like, "Uh, yes." It was, you know, what what about it? And he's like, "Well, it was pretty rad." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he's like, "Yeah, okay. yeah he's like, oh." The, the alligator grabbed this man's child and gripped it away from him. And the man had to watch his alligator eat this baby. <laughs> and he was helpless, screaming as his child was munched by an alligator. And, and then uh, he had the most badass line that like left us terrified. He's like, he's like, uh, yeah, this is alligator territory. We're just living in it. And I was like, oh fuck! And they like dropped us off. And we have fun at yeah. <laughs> have fun at the Pop Century Resort. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dropped us off. And I remember like thinking, oh my god, yeah, is there gonna be a fucking alligator behind this like Mighty Ducks mask uh, pool? You know, <laughs> like it was, and it, you know, I, I enjoyed, I enjoyed that kind of danger about Disney World because it is kind of rickety. You know, Space Mountain over there, you literally feel like you're gonna get like you're gonna break a ta your tailbone. Yeah, it it's does very feel, like. I wonder too if like because you you grew up as a Disneyland kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wonder if, like, because I have such, like, a familiarity and, like, a comfort... Like, I could comfortably navigate most of, like, Disneyland blindfolded. Like, yeah. Between working there, going there as a kid. I think when you're at Disney World, it's like, this all feels kind of familiar, but also kind of alien, so it does kind of heighten that weird semi-danger element to it. Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. And I remember uh, there was that ride that used to be in Epcot. I th Epcot, I believe, yeah. It was, like, that mission... To, not Mission to Mars, but, like... Whatever the, uh, Mission Space? Actually, it's still there, right? I think Mission, Mission Space, Space is still yeah, there. Yeah, Mission Space, it, which is like, I think it has the same cast from the movie Mission to Mars, too. Like yeah. Gary Sinise is the oh, yeah, guy. Yeah. That's yeah. right. That yeah. ride barf. sucks shit. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Such dude. a barf machine. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, there's nothing to it other than what if we kicked you in the stomach with gravity? Yeah, yeah well, someone died on that ride. I remember oh, hearing shit. that. Yeah, someone what a fucking, lame ride to die Yeah, on. I know, right? Yeah, and I remember they go, do you want the, do you want the heavy duty or do you want the novice? Like, that's they give right, you an option. And yeah, both times, I for some reason, 
have fallen into the, same ride. the torture. Where I'm like, you know, I could take it, but no, it just yeah, it feels like someone kicks you in your fucking testicles, right? And you just like barf it. Out. Yeah, it's so disgusting. That ride sucks. Yeah, for sure. Let's just uh, dedicate the rest of our uh, our show to just shitting on Mission Space or whatever. That the is. coolest thing about Mission Space is the outside of Mission Space. The outside oh, yeah. looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. It seems like it's going to be something cool in that big ass building. Yeah. I'm like, no, they just spin you in a circle. And I felt, you know, it's funny. Is I, I remember going, when I went on to Test Track, uh-huh. I remember feeling like the whole thing was just a giant advertisement for whatever, like, new Corvette was out. Which it absolutely <laughs> is. Yeah, yeah. I don't like the new, I don't know how long ago they did this update to Test Track, but I kind of hate it now. Because it used to like have like the vibe of like you were actually in like uh, oh it was like crash test test dummies before, yeah it was it? but it like oh, felt like, like it was like this big sort of industrial warehouse and they're yeah. like this mm-hmm. is how we test this and that no not the band <laughs> okay yeah <laughs> once there was so this good. test track <laughs> <laughs> Chevrolet sorry so stupid uh, okay I, I should have seen that yeah, coming yeah, okay so but they changed the aesthetic of it now where it's all like vaguely Tron looking yeah. and it's just uh, it doesn't have. Again, that weird charm of like, this is fucking odd, and why would you have made this choice? But it was like trying to be the more grounded park, and it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't like it as much. Now. Yeah, they really yeah. went for like this sleek, futuristic vibe. It's like, okay, we got to bring Epcot into the to the new century. Yeah, into the party. '90s. No, you yeah. don't. If anything, throw it back. We, I, I agree. The whole time, what we were, my girlfriend was freaking out because she's like, all I want is a sweater with like the original yep. Epcot logo, like yeah. the 1980 yep. totally. uncool mom pullover sweater. And they don't have it, and they're missing the point of like what Epcot it appeals to. It's it's a park for nerds. Yeah, yeah totally. it's a park for Disney nerds to be like, oh yeah, this is the this is the good deep cuts like fucking mm-hmm. back issue shit. Totally, I mean, it yeah, sucks yeah, yeah. because I'm with you on that one. I feel like Tomorrowland at Disneyland should be the same way. It should be basically the future that never happened. This is and this has always been my pitch for Tomorrowland is like the, cause the Tomorrowland problem is like when you can't keep up with an evolving thing. Don't even. It's, it is just 1955 forever. Yeah. You go retro yeah. futurist. That's yep. what people are thinking of when they think of tomorrow and anyway. Yeah. They're disappointed when they see all that weird rusted gold yeah. bullshit. Yeah, totally. yeah, yeah. And then I think with, with uh, Epcot, they should have done the same thing with Future World and just done the future that didn't exist in 1982 and make everything fucking orange, like burnt oranges and fucking, you know, uh, split pea soup green and exactly, brown yeah. and just done fucking that over and over again. And Yeah, don't try and keep up. Lean no, into the fantasy of what we thought to Tomorrow, yeah, hold yeah on which was <laughs> the, the year I was born. Uh, 1986 was the uh, the future. Of when, Tomorrowland? Yeah, 55, yeah. I love that they always, when, whenever they had futuristic things back in the day, it was always like too close. Like yeah. like 30 right. years isn't too far. I mean, yeah. that's just I can't want to lean into the optimist. I mean, look, you didn't bring all those Nazi scientists to build Tomorrowland <laughs> yeah. to not be optimistic. Yeah, yeah, but like the, uh, I mean, you think about what's that movie, uh, fuck, based on the video game with Alyssa Milano's booty the whole time is all those butt shots. Fuck, uh, what's the street? fighting movie not street fighter fucking god what's that called i have no idea streets of rage no double dragon the oh, double yeah, dragon yeah, yeah. yeah double dragon came out in 94 and right. it was like in 1997 the world will be exp- <laughs> you know it'll be <laughs> underground yeah it was like this post apocalyptic you know 97 which is 2 years or 3 years later it's just so ridiculous but i love when they kind of you know they they make those assumptions. I don't. Know, I do like the hokey, just like bad decision 1990s style stuff too. Right. That's just they're they're eliminating all of that. I mean that's all like they're pushing all that out. But I kind of like that. I mean, what was Goofy's Flight School pre Goofy's Flight School at oh, Cal- Mahal and Madness? Yeah, Mahal and Madness. Uh, that ride is such a bizarre. It's like a Scandia ride where it's dangerous. As yeah, fuck. well, California Adventure is like the California Adventure is like the flip side of that coin. I feel yeah, like yeah, because yeah. California Adventure it. The bad aesthetic of it was not fun when it came out, nor right. did it age fun. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. I don't, I do not think about like DCA 1.0 in any kind of like positive terms, other than like Superstar Limo was delightful. Oh, dude, yeah, I love that ride for sure. I there's there is you know a big element to like t- the uh, Animal Kingdom and a lot of those that were just totally of that time where they're trying to go grandiose. Like the 90s just had that like right. let's just bloated everything. You I think have, it's part you know, of why I hate Animal Kingdom. Oh, oh so you don't like Animal I Kingdom? I do not like Animal Kingdom. Oh, oh shit. I'm, yeah. I'm so interested. <laughs> so I will say two, my two biggest reasons are number one I am. I was not a zoo kid. Yeah, I was right. not like an animals kid. Okay, so I wondered if that was maybe like no, I'm no, not no. 
that impressed by animals. I think they're cool, but I'm never like, I would like to go see these animals. You know what I mean? Yeah. And number two, the whole aesthetic just reminds me of every bad field trip I ever went on in the 90s where it's like, all right, everything's in papyrus font and we kind of like Africa, but really we like socks and sandals. You know what I mean? <laughs> it feels yeah. like the educational toy store at the mall was a theme park. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, uh, I, I, what do you like about it? I'm I so thought curious. it was the most well done park there. That's fascinating yeah. to me because we were there for by, like three hours, and I was like, "Fuck this far. place!" By far the most well thought out, well designed, well built park at Walt Disney World. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, he, he, with the most fun shows and rides. Okay, I think yeah. he likes authenticity because Ross actually contracted AIDS in uh, Africa while he was <laughs> Jesus there. Fucking Christ! <laughs> I'm sorry. No, but there was. Uh, I love. I do. Uh, I yeah. do enjoy. Uh, I do enjoy Animal Kingdom as well. Well, because a lot of Africans have eights. No, yeah, I, no, I, I got it. No, no, I was able to read between the lines on that. Um, well, I, look, this is why this is why I'm starting a nonprofit to send butt machines to Africa. Uh, Bono is in on it with me. We're uh, yeah. no, well, but, you know, I'll tell you what. I, I have a, I, I will donate a fogger, a, a, a fogger that just fogs, uh, you know, some kind of disinfectant spray. It just kills it. <laughs> No, I, I'm kidding, guys. No, no one in Africa has AIDS. Okay, I'm joking. This is a stupid, silly podcast. Um, AIDS is a myth. <laughs> yeah, uh, if you die, dude, it's because you were gay and God was mad. It has dude, nothing to dude, do I'm, with the virus. I'm, this is a funny memory, dude. I, I was so I was at the, the uh, an open mic in in Kavina a few years ago, and this was when I was I was I had AIDS. No, yeah. I was I was pretty. Before I walked it off. Yeah, yeah. I was pretty twacked out. I was I was coming out, you know, Adderall binging. I was. Basically zonked, you know, tweaked out of my mind. Sure. I hadn't done comedy in a, in a while. It was like me getting back up, and I was stoked to just get up. And I had like a great set the night before, so I was just like kind of rolling. I felt good, and uh, <laughs> I felt too good, I think. And I, there was a dude that went up, and he 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 got a great response just doing a, a New York accent of, and he was it was a New York Harry Potter fan. That was the bit, and he's like, okay. "Oh yeah, I like uh, hot dogs and Harry Potter," and he got like this huge response, right? And I go up there and I'm just eating dick because I'm just like so I could barely say my name. I'm just so zonk. <laughs> hey, right. Robert Thompson here. You know, just fucking in my out of my mind. And then and then uh, I, I start to read the room a little bit. Like there's no response. And I'm just like, oh maybe I'll do. I'm just fucking so the lamest thing ever. You don't ever. It's your fault that you're sucking. You know, you don't ever. I'm like, oh so what do you guys want me to do, huh? <laughs> Harry Potter. Hey, Va oh, Voldemort has AIDS. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then, Someone like audibly booed me, and I was like, <laughs> and I was like "Wait, hey!" And, and I was like, "You know, Voldemort doesn't exist. Either just AIDS." <laughs> just like, yeah. And it was uh, more of a progressive room, and I think they were really quiet after that. I was like, uh, "It doesn't have to be a progressive room. It was just a bad set, but you know, it's fun to bring back uh, right now." Thank you guys. Uh, no, so I don't know, man. Disney World, though, it's you went during a weird time. Tran transportation was still open. Uh, yeah, it was all super normal. Plus, you could take weird. Ubers around, which is yeah. uh, kind of a game changer for like how big of a pain in the ass getting around on the bus and everything is. But even then, it's like it's weird too because it's like so Magic Kingdom and uh, or not Magic Kingdom, sorry, uh, uh, Epcot and MGM Studios, beautiful. They're right next to each other. It's like a mile between them. It's super doable. The Magic Kingdom is like in fucking Georgia. Like it's yeah, so yeah, yeah. far north of everything. And then the Animal Kingdom, I still don't really understand where it's the hell Egypt. that yeah. was. Yeah, exactly. Egypt. Yeah, because uh, it is a funny layout. I, I, I've only stayed at the discount, like, all-star resort. See, we which, stayed off property. Okay. So see, we were Ubering in every morning and for then figuring sure. it out from there. I love the all-star ones because they're cheaper, but it also feels like you're at Disney. Like, it feels like you're at a Disney place. Right. Like, I don't need to stay in, like, you know, La La Fu, uh <laughs> like Grand Delorean. Did you say La La Fu? La La Fu. Okay, good. <laughs> dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I but, ate cheese the entire time was great. Oh, yeah. good, yeah. You leave but, a snail under your pillow yes. when you check in. Yeah, yeah but I, I don't Chandy know. Chandy tends to cigarettes. Just like, <laughs> oh, no deodorant allowed on property. I loved it. Yeah, I, no I don't know. No Muslims allowed there. It was great. Oh, <laughs> fucking <glass. laughs> Is, is there like, a problem? Man. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I'm in the J. Suis Mickey Hebdo Tower. <laughs> <laughs> No man, it's uh, it's cool though, cause yeah, I went to Disneyland and there's no trams, there's no. So I went the other day and yeah, it was odd, cause they you basically get you know you have to walk that whole trek to the parks, and uh, I remember just. Uh, by the end of the day, like that walk back was pretty brutal. I mean, just the, going on the tram is always like a rough, 
like ride back. Right. The walking back was pretty brutal. And yeah, I think the, it's an extra mile or something. Yeah, and the mask. See, I never park in the structure. Really, it is my thing. I, I always park uh, Toy Story lot. No, you go down Catella. You know where that Denny's is? Not the like a little up Catella, kind of by across from Simba lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you turn in the little neighborhood there, there's always parking. You oh, just leave dope. your car there, and you just cruise through Simba through downtown Disney and walk in. Oh, that's better. Yeah, because some, sometimes there's like buses or waiting waiting for the tram is something like I'll never do again. Oh, I fucking hate like, it. Yeah. yeah, that's the worst. You feel like you're in like Hurricane Katrina, like at the right. height of like the disaster dome. And you can always walk a little faster than the tram would take yeah. you. Anyway, yeah, but there's some like a false like sunk value thing where it's like, well, then I get to drive. Like, yeah, and then you hear that uh, that lovely guy, the hello everyone, welcome to tomorrow. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, I miss that guy actually. Uh, bring some warmth. To I do soul. too, because hearing you do a bad impression of him yeah. kind of made me be <laughs> like, oh my heart. Yeah. Like, <laughs> hello everyone, this is. This is JFK. Hey, no, oh, yeah, sorry guys. I'm uh, it's a new new character bit uh, I'm doing, but JFK so, tram driver. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And on your um, left, you'll see some of my skull. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's gonna shot in the head. So, Keith, we're at a point in the show where we have an advertisement. Okay. And uh, we've we've kind of switched it up. We thought it'd be great for the guests to read an advertisement. Um, uh, g- g- that's all right. I got this at Spencer's. Uh, but yeah, here we go, sir. Handing me a paper. Now, oh, uh, <laughs> I, I want to make sure this is... You just handed me a paper that says the N-word a bunch of times. This is the right <laughs> ad for this episode? Yes, yes. All right. <laughs> it's the what episode? N- no. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm, 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 all of this is me? Yes. Okay. I don't remember agreeing to this. <laughs> in the U.S., one in two women and one in three men will develop cancer in their lifetime. Do you feel lucky, punk? Do you? <laughs> it says in Clint Eastwood voice. Uh, and that's the best you're getting out of me. <laughs> As people age, their cells amass more potentially cancerous mutations, ranging from colon cancer to testicular cancer. Yeah, baby, do I make you horny, baby? That doesn't say in Austin Powers voice, actually. Oh, okay. That was an artistic choice. <laughs> Given a long enough life, cancer will eventually kill you, unless you die first of something else. In a Gerard Butler voice, this is cancer. <laughs> At the, the, uh, I should have read the bit before I blew it. Right. At the Played Out Impressions Institute of Cancer Research, Dustin, California, our mission is to make the discoveries that defeat cancer. Very nice. It take my wife. We have a vision. I'm adding yes, to the yes, bit now because I felt bad about shitting on it while I was doing right. it earlier. We have a vision of a world where people can live out their lives free of cancer as a life-threatening disease. The Played Out Impressions Institute strategy sets out how we aim to achieve this. Terminate this cancer before it says I'll be back amazing you didn't do and it's not a tumor joke though. oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> this the, drop the ball yeah. we'll also be offering maternity tests Luke you are not the father I can't do a good Vader <laughs> As well as abortions. <laughs> President Gorbachev, <laughs> adopt this baby. Oh, I meant abort. So my bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. it does say abort. Okay, okay. Yeah, <laughs> President yeah. Gorbachev, I refuse to pick up context clues. <laughs> no, this no. is also not what Ronald Reagan says. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but uh, thank you, sir. Yeah, we'll, the animal kingdom of bits. Yes, it is. Yeah, we have oh, you put a lot of work into it, <laughs> yes, and I, I didn't appreciate any of it. <laughs> it's okay. I slaved. That was, yeah, 30, 34 <laughs> years of work. It paid off real well right now, dude. Man, dude. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's funny, though. You know, the, the Walt Disney World's, the, uh, the Knott's Berry Farms, all of them have reopened. You know, right. but you also went to Universal Studios. <laughs> I did, yeah. And what was that like? Universal, uh, Universal is such a weird park anyway, just because it's like the one, I haven't been to the one in Florida, but the one here is so like, it, there's not that much there really. There's only like seven rides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, it was it was kind of the closest to like, you wouldn't really know it was COVID times because the lines were still kind of long and it was like people were just sort of doing their own thing. But uh, it was it was not bad. I went on that Secret Life of Pets ride. Oh, that looks open. pretty rad. It's, I mean, it's cute. It's, as far as like a, you know what I liked about it is that it is a kid's ride that is in the tradition of like dark rides where it's like actually like animatronics and there's like physical sets it's not all just screens 3D yeah because I hate everything just pivoting to screens like that Spider-Man ride just opened at California Adventure is that all that it is it's all screens it's like a it's like a Midway Mania ripoff wow people are waiting like seven hours it's like insanity over there well I guess it's like this crazy thing where you don't shoot with a gun you actually do the Spider-Man hands and like it can read your motions and get that on the screen which is cool but it's like yeah I don't like the movement into everything being screens and, uh, yeah, I think for like you know an adult 
like land where you just like spray ropes. <laughs> yeah, I think like maybe. Oh yeah, they're not prepared like- for how many. <laughs> oh, is this how I do it? <laughs> the fucking jokes they're gonna. Because we got that. I worked at Midway Mania, and it was every third guy was like yeah. a dad. Like yeah, 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 I'm, yeah. I'm here to be the fun one. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. I, that's why I, I did love. I do miss those dad jokes that I would. You know, my dad would uh, play on us when we were at those parks. Like he would shake the uh, the buckets when we were real little. He would, you know, uh, say his name was Dick on ET. Right. When they'd be like, bye, <laughs> good. Dick. Dick. <laughs> yeah, which was very humorous. Yeah, I mean, that's a great ET. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you know, I, the one thing that I do love about Universal Studios, after like them changing in and out those five rides, they still leave Waterworld to this day. Like, Waterworld. I'm so bummed I couldn't see because I love that show. Oh, yeah, it's not. They're not having shows. No. With uh, all the stars of CSI, uh, Barstow. Oh, I always love their little credits and their headshots outside. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, oh, this guy played a dead body on uh, Cold Case Files or some <laughs> yeah, shit. Yeah. But I, yeah, and I love like that this bombed, this movie that bombed like 26 years ago right. is like still like one of the big shows. I heard they're finally going to get rid of it for Dagon Alley. Which I don't I, know. I, I, look, that makes all the sense in the world. There's no way other than, but I like being 12 to like really defend not doing that. <laughs> yeah. But that'll be kind of sad, honestly. I know it would be I, because I imagine that like you know living way past us dying, like all three of us. I, I mean, have, I would have figured they would have got rid of that way before they got rid of Back to the Future, the ride, which I'm so this is so angry odd. about. Yeah, I like that Simpsons ride, but I it's, yeah, the it's, Back it's, to the Future thing felt like the quintessential like Universal Studios yeah. ride. Yeah. That yeah. was every commercial, that was every pitch mm-hmm. for it. I, yeah, I, I can remember when they announced they were getting rid of it, and I decided at that moment I was boycotting Universal Studios for life. Right. It didn't. It lasted probably about 15 years. I did not go back. And Damn. I finally did. Yeah, I finally did. Which I I, I love Universal Studios. It's it's, I, it's fun. A it's park. a different yeah different it's, vibe. It's a place that like. So I'm not gonna go there fucking five times a year. Right. But I can definitely go there once a year and have a really good time. Right. See, I got the pass when I was living in LA because I was like, mm-hmm. I don't need to go spend 12 hours here. Yeah. But I could. Go, I lived five minutes away. Yeah. Right? You just pass. Shoot on yeah. over and hang out. Yeah. Go on one ride. Yep. Chill out. Grab yep. a grab a beer and leave. Yeah. Like yeah. Say hello to the out of place Doc Brown that's just like skating I around. Yeah. <laughs> doing the, yeah. Why am I still here? Yeah. It's, it's fucking <laughs> yeah. great. It's like whoa. It's the, and that's like this kind of stuff that I love about Universal Studios is that there is that out of place Doc Brown just. Randomly hanging out, right? And you're like, "Holy fuck, it's Doc Brown!" And you know, I'm such a fucking nerd, right? Like, when I see costume characters, I still get like juiced up. <laughs> I don't know why. I get that though. You know, it's like uh, that weird like. I don't know. I it's still Dom Toretto. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my God, he's gonna tell me we're family. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just like. I just get. Ex- it's so. It's so weird. Like I, I don't know why I get that way, but it's almost like seeing like. A, a weird celebrity, even though it's just a costume character. Right. Even the fucking purple minion, you know? Like, I don't even <laughs> like the Despicable Me, Me movies all that much. I mean, they're okay. Right. But, like, just seeing the purple minion, it's just like, oh, cool, cute. Because <laughs> Ross <laughs> also I, contracted I, AIDS from the purple <laughs> minion. So, I, I, you know, I, I fucking, you know what's weird is I have no real feeling about Despicable Me, the movie. Other, I'm like, it's a fine movie. It's fine. But the minions have become this weird thing that is emblematic of just the mental degradation of America to me that I have a visceral reaction whenever I see that one overhang in the 101 at the back of the ride. Yeah, yeah. Like if you're driving down the freeway and he's just looking down at you like the fucking billboard from uh, The Great Gatsby. Yes, yes. Like the eyes. But when I was at Universal, there had been like some, one of the mass shootings, pick one, had just happened like the day before. And I just had this like tableau of the minion dancing in front of a bunch of children wearing surgical masks with a giant flag flying at half mast behind it. Oh, and I was like, this is the fucking weirdest, darkest. Imagine explaining this moment to yourself from five years ago. Oh, I know, dude. Yeah, it, it is weird because every like uncle on Facebook that, you know, shouldn't. Like you shouldn't shouldn't yes. have a voice. Uses like the those memes with the minions, you know, like Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Where yeah. well, it's like they're kind of just like normal, like sassy uncle memes, but there's always a twinge of racism yeah, to it, yeah, you know. Yeah. Just, sarcasm is another free service I offer. Also, go back to Puerto Rico. And it's just like <laughs> one of them just going, Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. They're kind of like the Pepe's of uh theme park uh characters. <laughs> it's, I guess, it's, at this point. Yeah, Pepe the Frog the kids. <laughs> yeah. 
But yeah. I, uh, I like Universal. You know what I like about Universal's sort of approach is that Disney seems to kind of try and be like, well, what's going to last for 100 years? Whereas Universal seems to be like, every 10 years, we're just going to replace everything with yeah. whatever's yeah. cool now. Yeah. Which I kind of like that sort of lack sure. of preciousness where it's right. like, fuck it. No one's going to care about Transformers in 20 years, but yeah. something else will be famous. Yeah. We'll yeah. get rid of the Brendan Fraser mummy for something <laughs> eventually. It's like, yeah. what's, good in, what's big in China right now? 100%. Bring it over. Yeah. I noticed that the last time I went to Universal 2, it's like the amount of Chinese these tourists that were there right it's just like it, it was not it was something that i didn't experience as a kid okay but you could totally see like the influx of new money <laughs> and new tourists from china coming to that's interesting i had not America noticed that and to you and the, straight to universal studios huh yeah yeah very interesting huh. yeah uh ross is also going to share a minion meme uh, after <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's all these damn Wash china man i'm trying to trying to go on uh <laughs> fucking backdraft and uh <laughs> Apparently, I'm at Panda Express. Yeah. Yeah. A backdraft was another one. I, I wish yeah. that was still around. Hey, man, this is the white man's Jurassic World boat ride. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like Aryan dinosaurs. <laughs> oh this is the... Yeah, this They're is the... are all wearing robes now. Yeah, yeah. No, oh, man. I, yeah, it's... <laughs> well, we just did an arcade special. I don't think half of it should be like put out into the public because I, I it had dawned on me all these theme parks have arcades, you <coughs> right. know. And I was thinking about, do you think pe there's a pedophile out there that like got really good at gaming just to like court children? Like it's so disturbing, but there's probably some guy out there that's like fucking you know killer like at MK3, you dude, know, like, like a diddle diddle dude. revolution. Yeah, <laughs> 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 like dude, yeah, Check it'll say all. Chester on like the yeah. top of the score, yeah. Yeah. I, see, I like the idea of that going the other way, where some pedophile showed up to the arcade to be like, yeah, I'm time to grope some kids. But then he started playing like ski ball just to pass the time and was like, you know, I really like this. <laughs> and that man went on to become the world ski ball champion and yeah. never finger another kid. Yeah, like rehabilitating him. That's fucking great. Right. Dude. Yeah. It was like Jay-Z finding rap and getting him off the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Selling crack. Maybe, dude. Maybe that'll work. I don't yeah. know. But... Yeah, pedophiles. Uh, we've we've touched on everything, guys. Uh, AIDS, pedophilia, butt machine boys. Uh, butt machine boys. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I mentioned I I did an analogy with Hurricane Katrina for some reason. Um, cancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah cancer. <laughs> it's it's yeah. been about what I thought it would be. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny, dude. Because like getting back into comedy and stuff, I always I'll think to myself, and I'll, like you know, there's a lot of open micers that do like shocking material. Right. When they start, and it's always like. You know, I was just at a mic, you know, the other day in Orange County, and there's a dude did a whole George Floyd bit just like right off the top. And it's, I think I've seen this fucking okay, dude. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, he he talked about uh, genociding homeless people. Right. But it, it, there's there's no there's no there's no punchline. There's no nuance. There's stuff. no wink or charm to <laughs> no, it. No, no, no. It's just <laughs> I used to, I used to joke around like this is my impression of every OC comics first set, mine included. Yeah, but yeah. Your first open mic set. You ever get AIDS from raping 9 11? <laughs> <laughs> well, like, it's funny because I was like, oh, I was like, oh, man, like, this is just, I was being all critical. And then I thought about all of my material. I mean, even to this point, like, I, I just was like, wow, what, who am I to talk? The first bit I had was about, man, technology these days, huh? It's, uh, it's really distracting. And then I'm like, how did the Mona Lisa paint the Mona Lisa? Or how would they do that these days? And I, I did this, the whole punchline was just Hitler jacking off. And me doing an act out of Hitler coming. But, the, but like, that is I'm such a, a you way to get there, I'm though. I'm about to oot come. Hi. Like, it was, I mean, that is, I don't know. There's a little bit more charm than just, like, all the gen, all the homeless people should be put up against the wall and just shot to death. It was literally no jokes. It was just, like, a weird manifesto that he was just, like, yeah. Well, but the, the beauty of doing, like, dark, offensive comedy is, like, there is a joy to be found in it, and it's like, look how we're all being naughty together. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. you just see these, like, sort of people who just, like, they feel, like, angry about it, and, like, they're trying to, you guys can't handle my fucking truth, and it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. no, you just, I don't care what your truth is. If you have that energy, you're a fucking nerd. I don't yeah. really care if you're offensive. I care if you're fucking lame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah you could totally, you, it's all in, like, the, uh, the, the intention, and you know when someone's having fun, you know, and, and. It, it's a lot like uh, Disney World, right? Yeah, Ross, that's right. right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Happy birthday to Ross here, by the way. Birthday. It's birthday. his birthday, oh, dude. Man, dude. Birthday Eve, technically. It is. But when this yeah. comes out, you'll be you'll be a year I'll older. Be older, man. Yeah, I'm nice. dude. Getting old and bald and red. It's what are you What are you gonna do for your birthday, Ross? Uh, I'm gonna fucking have. I, I don't do drugs anymore. Yeah. So and I, because of. <laughs> Because of problems I have with any substance, I try to avoid all sugar for the, the course of the year. This is all cheese weight, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, wait, I'm, does does AIDS have anything to do with? Uh, 
<laughs> this well, I'm or... trying to I'm trying to like keep my weight up just specifically <laughs> uh, so that way when I the AIDS starts to really eat away, I'll have like a really like chiseled okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all right i got all right. my summer aids and i'm yeah, ready to go <laughs> yeah totally um so i'm gonna have dessert and fucking barbecue is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna eat meat and i'm gonna have sugar and that's what we're gonna do after this oh nice dude yep yes heck yeah supplemental supplemental content for the robert land youtube channel nice oh, yeah yeah, yeah I'm excited. which essentially i was thinking about this in the car is basically I was thinking about what we would do for like other content for the YouTube channel, and I'm thinking it's basically going to be chunks of what my old YouTube used to be. Oh wow! And I yeah, feel yeah. like it's better if we do it together. Oh man, yeah, you know? let's do it. Yeah, yeah I'm fun. excited. I'm jazzed, dude. Yeah, because I used to like doing all the old YouTube shit, but I just found that like it was too hard for me because being an egomaniac, I just fucking ate away. It just yeah, it was bad. Yeah, it just I got real. It got real gnarly real fast. It became a fucking <laughs> Addicted to YouTube comments and likes. We just need to do, uh, maybe get into the conspiracy like realm, you know, those bad people, voiceovers, man. you know, like uh, Henry Kissinger, Henry Kissinger and Dr. Fauci and the Charmin <laughs> got together. I love how everyone goes into the origins of COVID, right? Like, w for the excuse like not to care about COVID, it's always the origin story. You're where I'm like, story. what? What is it? So the virus is a so was a real right? thing. Yeah, yeah. You know what happened? You know what this is all about, right? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I worked in a grocery store the whole pandemic for the most part. Right. And I got laid off at the end of it, which was such a fucking bummer. I got COVID during the whole process and everything, but there was a dude that would come in with an anti-mask mobile because this is oh boy. It's in Chino too, so there's gonna be a lot of that. And there's like, yeah, he was like master of the devil, and he he wore a mask, but it's like I'm not a bitch, or you know, yeah. it's like, <laughs> I know. Want, like I want to be able to go into the Circle K, but I need y'all to know I'm not a fag. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, you know, it was it, it was funny because when I was in LA, I, I got like some there's some New York pizza place that opened up over there, and unfortunately, like that day on Twitter, it was like revealed that the uh, the owner was like super racist or something. I'm like, God damn. I mean, it was good pizza. It was made. Made with love and hate, I think it's saying, like, you know, sometimes, I don't know, race. Open it here in Huntington Beach. Well, you're describing yeah. it as a Papa John's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> dead curb stomp pickup. Uh, no. Um, <laughs> it was. Uh, That's <laughs> very good. No, no, but the, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, the Aryan chicken wings, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They've got white sauce. No, it was, uh, it was funny because I got out of my car and I took my mask off. And, uh, you know, I've been working with COVID the whole, through the whole pandemic. And this chick, like, immediately, like, we're getting to her car and she's like, uh, wear a mask, you know, just like yelling, yelling at me. And immediately I turned to that guy like, you know, Dr. Fauci, uh, the Wuhan lab on 34th street, you know, that thing's been, yeah, I like, I mean, it was like, I turned, yeah, I, it was like healed real fast. And there's pieces of, like when I was at Disneyland, I, how was it with masks at Disney world? Cause they just like, people were actually being pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They were being pretty cool. Like occasionally that like they would roll up on you and tell you to put your mask uh, on if they saw somebody. Nobody was really being a dick. There were like a, you could take them off. You were like in certain like eating areas, yeah. And then you could. Uh, they had like a couple spots where you could just hang out, and take them off for a minute. That weren't like super crowded, yeah. But people weren't really being showeds. Uh, they they would take them off on the rides every once in a while, which you weren't supposed to do. But then they would yell at you on the intercom. Wow. Yeah, yeah, they did that. On, I was on Haunted Mansion, and they were, <laughs> yeah, they like chime in all of a sudden, like yeah, please put your mask on. And not in yeah. character. That's <laughs> but, no, that's, well, that's how you know you're in trouble on the Haunted Mansion when they're not doing the voice anymore. They're yeah. like, hey, stop fingering. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, dude, uh, it's it's been great to have you back on the show, dude. Keith. This was so fun. Man. Yeah, man, yeah, it's dude. good times. Uh, next time we, next time you're on, because we, we got, you got to come back. Yeah, um, we got to have you talk more about your experiences at Disneyland. I listened to the Robert Land number three, I believe it was. Yeah, uh, that yeah. you were on because I wanted to get an idea. I had no idea. I'd never met you before. Right. So I wanted to get an idea of like what I was, what I was, what we were working with. You know what I'm saying? Um, but uh, make sure I was up to snow. No, no, I just wanted <laughs> to be like, <laughs> to the hey, dude, is this club. dog ready for the big Listen, time? Fucking, okay, is he ready for the big show so, in the cast man's garage? Dude, I'm telling you, man. He's like, fucking ready to go. Well, you know, it's like, you're like, so I've heard, We don't bring scrubs into Robert Lane. I've, I've heard a lot about you. Like, I've, I've heard, like, oh, Keith, man, he's the fucking man. Oh, I like, suck. I'm just being an I asshole. Just, like, I've heard all this stuff, like, oh, Keith, 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 Keith. So it's like, okay, well, 
fuck, I got to be on my shit. You know what I'm saying? No, like, you don't. Absolutely. I, well, I think it's because like we, we were trying to, uh, we were, we wanted some more comics back on. I'm like, oh, dude, Keith's great because he's a he's a comic <laughs> yeah. and he loves theme parks. Right. Yeah, so it's, it's great. He's funny as fuck and he's quick as shit. Yeah, yeah. So so he just so I wanted, you uh, I wanted to do a little. Homework, he's you know listening to an old episode. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. but um, we gotta have you t- like talk about some of the weird ass Disneyland experiences when you work there. Yeah, absolutely. Because I would love to like ask you more about that and and just I mean, really take a deep dive because. I'm fascinated by that stuff, and I've had some friends that have worked at Disney mm. for years as well. Okay. And so I'm always curious to see what those back, backs, back of the... Like, yeah, what's, the what's really going yeah, behind on. the Iron Gate, you know, what's happening. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, is Fauci involved? Or yeah. is there, uh, <laughs> Fauci is involved. He's changing the Disney look to promote a global order. Yeah. You know what that yeah. symbol's all about, right? Okay, yeah. it's a fucking symbol in the D. It's actually, you know, if you take it and just dissect it. Anyway, Iron Cross. Uh, uh, yeah. Fucking, uh, so what do you got going on, man? Uh, I have a podcast uh, called This Is Not A Show. Uh, it's on iTunes, uh, Spotify, all that shit. I host it with uh, Tom Goss, uh, another funny comic. Um, I've got shows coming up. In some places, I don't know exactly where off the top of my head, but uh, they'll all be on my social media at Keith Tells Jokes on uh, Twitter, Instagram, all that shit. Sweet. Heck yeah. Are yeah. you still doing the the hockey show with with Tom? No, we oh, uh, we fuck. We, yeah, we, we we were trying to do it during COVID. It was like they, a like, hype pandemic show. Yeah, when they like, came back with the bubble, we uh, we did we wanted to do like a like a weekend update for hockey, basically uh-huh. thing that we did on YouTube. We did like five episodes. It was. Uh, it was okay. He's more. He knows way more about hockey than I do. Yeah. I was kind of like, I've only been like a big hockey fan for a couple of years, uh-huh. but I was like, I just want to see if I can do comedy about this. It was such a fucking pain in the ass to like write those and edit them and get it done. We just don't have time to do yeah. it anymore. We might do it as a podcast at some point. But well, and all that stuff is so like, it, it, when it's happening, it's happening right now, and you got to get that shit like fucking chopped up, done right. out. Right. And it's like at the end of the day, I'm not a sports journalist nor <laughs> right. a video editor yeah. on top of trying to run like an actual career. Yeah. Oh, that no is so cool. But yeah, I could totally see. These hockey because I watch a lot of hockey YouTube because I'm a fucking hard hardcore hockey fan. Okay. And those hockey YouTubers, man, I, they fucking dedicate their goddamn existence to putting up hockey videos every fucking day. Well, that was every part. Of, I started getting into like some of the hockey YouTube shit, and I'm like, these guys are all very fun, but they have like, there's not a lot of charisma to yeah, these yeah, dudes. Yeah, so yeah. like, if I brought like the level of like comedy chops or yeah. whatever, and then just a base level of hockey knowledge, I could be the king of this dumbass art. <laughs> totally. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, but there's. Uh, yeah, I totally fucking put Steve Dangle in a body bag uh, or what yeah, the fuck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's the dude with like the colorful suits? That's, That's Don like Cherry. Oh, Don, Don Cherry. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, Don, yeah, yeah. Don yeah. Cherry would agree with a lot of the Country Bear Jamborees views okay. from earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah does he have like a Burning Cross suit or something? Like <laughs> yeah, all that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> yeah you know, I, I watch all those hockey YouTubers and I, I like them, but you're right. There's no charisma on any. Right. And Steve Dangle is like the one that has the. I like Dangle because Dangle is the one guy who's like a good entertainer on Yeah, he, he really throws, like, he's just always screaming and fucking. Yeah. I mean, and being a Maple Leafs fan, there's a lot of screaming that happens. Yeah, exactly. A lot of pain. Lot this, of is, pain. Yeah. this is the most niche podcast ever recorded because we've derailed yeah I know <laughs> <laughs> it's talk about team specific hockey, hockey YouTubers, YouTubers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's so funny because like I like literally that's at this point in my life like that's all I've been fucking watching it's so bad dude I can't fall asleep unless I have like uh, some like that hockey guy oh my god I bullshit. watch Shannon yeah I watch him constantly yeah it's like the only thing that'll put me to sleep yeah. now is that Look or videos that. about or like yeah. old defunct land episodes oh yeah oh, the dude. only two I watched, things I can tell oh, god, yeah I yeah. love that too did you guys see Disney Plus is doing like a, a behind the ride show and I'm like oh great you're oh, the doing the podcast yeah, or, or, sponsored or, by The Rock yeah yeah yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. produced by The Rock rather. yeah no, they're, yeah it's gonna yeah it's gonna be Kevin Hart and The Rock just yeah. just fucking on the, the, <laughs> yeah. that's it that's the thing yeah, yeah. yeah. no but it's happy for the new Jungle Cruise yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know I mean I, the, the Defunct Land and Yesterworld or Yesterworld They've like done such a fantastic job, like making like documentaries, and so now of course Disney's chiming in. We can do this. Yeah, with Shitty. the yeah, yeah with the Disneyfied. Yeah, probably. we'll take out all the stuff that was interesting about yeah. Yeah. Like Michael. Who never heard of him, <laughs> yeah. and then just kind of uh, yeah, that's gonna blow. And yeah, I hate that. yeah. So I was like, man, I hope they employ them, or but no, it's gonna be you no. know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, back onto the podcast, Robert. Where they, where can people find you? What do you have going on? Well, uh, gosh, I, I'm starting to do uh, uh, stand up again. Uh, we're we're doing shows. Fuck, when is this one coming out? Uh, the fuck yeah, nation. Yeah, just check out. Yeah, stuff. Robert Land podcast on on pretty much everything. Uh, Bobber Bompson forever on Facebook to confuse everybody. Uh, Dick Neptune. We're uh, writing some new music. Um, yeah, so man, check us out, Robert Lamb Podcast. Yeah, go over to my YouTube too. It's Roscoe Soul Train on YouTube, and if you just type in weird spelling, it'll come up somehow. 
and there'll be links down in this YouTube video to that shit as well. Yeah. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, thanks for being here, Keith. Yeah. And we're gonna end on a laugh. Like we just we just heard the greatest uh, homeless genocide open mic joke. Uh. You know? <laughs> 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 oh, they do all smell like that.